Hello humans, Artist with the Fro here, and welcome back to the show. This is a video that was really in the making for a while now, and I'm finally finding the time to really go back and release all of the old stuff that I've worked on, so I'm glad that I'm able to jump back into something like this. This is a Q&A session, and I'll be answering some of the questions that were asked towards the end, or rather the beginning of September, and as they progressed into the rest of the month, most of these questions will be about Yu-Gi-Oh! related things. Um, however, there is going to be more information coming out about certain things based around, you know, the channel, stuff that we have, content, and otherwise. Before we start, as always, again, please make sure that you guys like, comment, and subscribe. If you guys want more of this type of content, also, please make sure that you join in on our Discord. We'll be doing remote duels, we'll have interactive giveaways, and we'll have a whole bunch of other fun things to have, alongside a great community of artists, Yu-Gi-Oh! players, and just well-round good people. So with that being said, let's jump into the Q&A. Honestly, when I think about great products for folks to buy, especially around this time, I often think that this year and the past year were the best moments for products, for budget players specifically. There were obviously duelist collections or structure decks that have come out in the past, and we know that the standard price of structure decks are about $10. But recently, I feel like Konami's kind of been making it more and more accessible for newer players. Right off the bat, the first thing that I would say is probably the best product to get is Dual Devastator. Um, not only does it come with a handful, and that's a pun right there, a handful of hand traps, but it also has a whole myriad of other cards that are really good for today's current meta. You have trap cards that you can use for these current sort of like negates that you might need. You have monsters, whether they be synchros, exceeds, even some links as well that could potentially help you out. I think Dual Devastator is probably one of the best products that is... Uh, sort of subsidiary or sort of like complementary product that you can buy with like a standard structure deck and you'll be all set. Other than that, if you kind of want to take, you know, your gamble with it, Dual Overload is also another kind of like off, I guess, kilter, random sort of set. But the good thing about it is that it actually has other good cards that are necessary. Link Cross, you have your Halky Fibrax, and then you have the potential to get other cards as well. Aside from that, I would probably say that Maybe the Gold Sark Tins, but mm, I'm not really thinking about that. I feel like Dual Devastator and Dual Overload are probably the best two side sets uh, for folks to get. And of course, uh, making sure that you pick up sleeves, making sure that you pick up uh, deck boxes, anything that you can find, usually on TCG Player, is also something good to have in your inventory. There are many times when I actually think about this, and I look back on the Sealed Only series a lot, and I just kind of have to like internalize the fact that I really just <laughs> poured all of my money into this uh, sort of series, but not only has it gotten me engaged into, or rather re-engaged into Yu-Gi-Oh!, but it's also kind of been that thing where it's like, I spent this much money, so I should be making these many videos. In regards to like specific situations, um, the one that I do remember, there was one that I had kind of like around the start of the Sealed Only series. I had purchased Fist of the Gadgets, and I purchased it because I thought that all of the Fire Fist cards came in that set, and they were all reprinted, uh, specifically because I needed Fire Fist Raven. And I went through the entire set, and I was just like, I didn't pull a single Raven at all, so either he's a secret rare or he's short printed. Um, and then, lo and behold, I look up, I look it up after I think some of my viewers told me on a stream that like he doesn't come in Fist of the Gadgets. I was like, there's no way he has to be in there, and unfortunately, he wasn't. So. I spent about 50 bucks, uh, and I was kind of like a little bit pissed. I mean, I kind of did plus. I did pull an eagle and a peacock, so I was all right on that side, but I was just like, you know what? Wow, I really just wasted my money thinking that this card would be in here. And uh, that was, yeah, that was probably one of the most frustrating times I've had in recent memory. This is an astounding yes. I've been yearning to return back to Locals because the Sealed Only series has been the thing that's really gotten me back into playing Yu-Gi-Oh! Especially on a competitive level. And for the times that I did go to King's Games, uh, or rather to my Locals, it was one of those things where I was able to really, really 
engage with the community and it's kind of odd right when you play Yu-Gi-Oh online you're in a very singular setting unless you're in like a discord where you can find other people to play with it's often hard to find like you know not necessarily challenges but it's also it's kind of hard to find those interactions that you know sort of develop when whether it be friendships whether it be rivalries whether it be people that you're looking to trade for or even folks to even avoid it's quite interesting the relationship that you can build with some of the vendors some of the sellers and majority of the players as well just being in that type of environment so once once we're able to safely return back uh, to sort of tournaments it seems like we're doing kind of remote duels that might be the thing for this current year possibly maybe even next year as well once we kind of have a real big grasp on the covid situation um, of course there will be no locals no regionals but once we kind of have all of that under control and we're able to safely integrate back into the community then i think that i will be one of the first people to be jumping back into the scene I'm actually not sure about this. I would assume yes, but I would also assume that they're actually opening up locals again and having people come in. Now, I'm again very adverse to that, and it's not really, you know, any bias against the company or any bias against my locals or nothing, but it's one of those things where you kind of just still have to be careful about people's sanitary, or rather people's hygiene, um, the sanitary conditions of the environment, uh, traveling out there, all of these various different things that could potentially make you at risk for uh, contracting uh, this virus. Plus, the fact that we are now in the last three months of the year, and as the seasons do tend to get colder, flu season kind of approaches behind, and it's not really gonna be a recipe for success if I guess they do have in-person dueling. If they have remote dueling though, I think that that's something that I definitely wanna check in and see if that is something that I would wanna do. I'm, I'm perfectly fine with jumping into remote duels. I've actually been trying it out with a few other Yugi tubers. So it's something that I would love to do, not only with the sealed only series, but also as free duels for viewers as well. So this is a, uh, this might actually be a very long question or rather a very long answer because there are a lot of decks that I think are getting a lot of potential. Not only do you have Phantom Rage that's coming out, which will support the Phantom Knight set, it'll also give Beast Warriors, rather Beast, Wing Beast, and Beast Warriors extra support with the Tri Brigades. Um, but you also have like a myriad of dark support that's just coming in that set. And as we know, dark monsters are kind of one of the sort of most supported attributes in all of Yu-Gi-Oh! So there's gonna be a lot of support coming out for those specific archetypes. Like right off the bat, I can think of Zodiac, Ancient Warriors, Fire Fist, Fur Hires, um, are all gonna benefit off of the Tri Brigades. I think uh, Phantom Knights, Raid Raptors are both gonna, uh, of course, benefit off of that, as well as Burning Abyss, which does primarily run a Phantom Knight engine. But then you also have other sets that are coming out in the future, as well as structure decks that might give sort of massive widespread support to other decks with the dragoonity structure deck for example you're giving dragons kind of like a myriad of support there and dragons of course konami is, loves dragons to death that's by far i think their most supported uh archetype or just type in general um, and then of course you have the ice barriers which will increase the frog support unfortunately they weren't able to win the create a card contest but you have that and talking about the creator card contest, you have the Insectors, which have recently just won. So we're going to get Insector support. So I think next year is going to be very, very interesting. I think we're also going to get certain reprints of cards that are very high in value. I think Evenly Matched is most likely going to get a common reprint or a super uh, reprint somewhere down the line next year. I think we can also expect certain cards from this year that have come out to get reprints. Um, and then we might even see, and this is kind of like a real, real stretch, but we might see like Pot of Extravagance going down again. We might see other cards going down as well. And, and this is kind of like my secret tech. I know that everybody's made it a meme so far, but realistically, thinking about the speed of the game, we might have uh, certain cards come back off the ban list, specifically uh, Maxi. I think that that would probably be the only card that around this time, that, that type of conversation seems more and more legitimate. So 
those are kind of my takes. I think that there will be a lot of cards that will be, or rather a lot of decks that will be showing their face in the upcoming sets, or rather as we progress throughout these last three months and as we get into the next, uh, rather the early months of the next year. But I'd actually push that question over to you humans. So let me know, what decks do you think in the chat below? What decks do you feel might actually get additional support? Or what sort of archetypes do you feel might actually have a chance to come back depending on how we've been playing the game throughout. And that's gonna wrap up our Q&A. Again, this is gonna be a recurring session. I'm gonna try to see if I can continue this. Now that I'm getting back into the groove and making videos again, it's been really interesting, or rather really exciting to jump back into some of the content that I really love. Expect, expect a lot more videos, expect a lot more streams, and expect a lot more all around good content from me. Uh, moving forward. I'll try to be more consistent with my schedule as we do move into these later months or rather later parts of the year uh, and I will continue to bring the content that you guys enjoy and love. So thank you guys all for watching. Again if you like this type of content be please make sure that you leave any other further questions in the comments. You can also join our discord as well to get some ideas or rather some sort of insight on what goes on in the Artist with a Fro community. With that being said as well, please make sure that you like, comment, and subscribe. Follow us on Twitter, Instagram, on all forms of social media. Links are always in the description below. And with that being said, I've been the Artist with a Fro, and that, my friends, is the show. Thank you all for watching. Take care.